Hi everybody, it's Bonnie Jean from BonnieJean.com. Welcome back to today's video. In today's video, we are going to touch base on what it is like to create an infographic using PowerPoint. Now I do realize that PowerPoint is a presentation program and is generally not used for infographics, but I like it. And I think anybody that is familiar with PowerPoint or even anybody who is not could really grasp the concept of creating an infographic inside of this program. So the depression infographic that you see on the screen right now is what I put together based on the research that we conducted last week during part two of our tutorial. And once I have all my data collected, I will take it and I will put it inside of Microsoft Word. Now once inside Microsoft Word, I will break it down into a header, a footer, and then individual sections that will help tell my story inside the infographic. Now once I did this, I realized there was information left over and then it was a personal call as to whether or not I wanted to use that information inside of my infographic. And I decided to keep it out for brevity's sake. I didn't want to make my infographic longer than it had to be. So once all this data is separated in order to tell my story properly, then I'll sit down and actually work inside of PowerPoint to put my graphics together, my text in perspective and get everything all ship shape. Now this is 2,400 pixels long by 600 pixels wide. And in order to get this size, I go to design, hit the page setup and set my page up so that it's 6.25 inches wide by 25 inches long. And once you save this infographic out, it will measure exactly 600 by 2400 pixels. And I do this on purpose because a lot of people use WordPress blogs and they should be able to fit at least a 600 wide pixel image into a blog post without having to shrink it down. Now there's a lot that goes into creating an infographic based on where you place your information, what kind of information that it is, whether or not you need pie charts or whether you can use columns or if you're going to use the entire extent of the page. Now here's what I did. I broke the information down in Microsoft Word and I started to explain directly at the very top of my infographic what depression was. I used the subtitle to do that. Then I broke section down into who it affects the most. Section two here is based on the symptoms. Section three shows where in the United States the most cases are prevalent down to why does depression happen? Why are women affected more than men? And then finally the conclusion, which is where you can get help or what kind of help is available. And finally, always, always remember that when you create an infographic and you, and you get your information from other sources, you have to cite those sources at the bottom of your infographic to give credit where credit is due. There's a lot more that goes into creating an infographic than just sitting down here and putting places in columns and putting little donuts on the screen or making, you know, bullet points. You have to envision what this infographic is going to look like before you actually sit down and create it. And that's based upon columns. Now, if you look at mine, you'll see that here there's two columns. This is actually three columns. This is section two. This is one column, two columns, three columns. And then for the United States map, I decided to use all, you know, all the uh, infographic entirety in the width. And then I put two columns for this section and then down here at the bottom, I actually used four columns so you can count them. There's one, two, three, and four. Now it's a lot easier if you sit down and create an infographic when you have a template in front of you, but I've been doing this long enough that I no longer need the template, but just to give you an idea what a template looks like, you might start your infographic using a basic layout like this. And this basically shows you how you can lay your information out differently on the screen so that it doesn't all look the same from top to bottom. And you'll find out that if you do that, if you use templates like this to help separate your data, that your infographic will turn out much, much better. Now inside of PowerPoint, you also have the ability of using their tools with, you know, shapes and charts uh, and smart art and think of that nature. But I prefer not using these particular tools when I make my infographics because I don't like the bounding box that uh, PowerPoint puts on the screen. So I like making these donuts here ha by hand and I'll show you exactly how to do that in one of our next videos. There's simple things you can do like putting these banners together using odd shapes again that you can pick up inside of PowerPoint and make some really nifty looking banners. 
I feel confident that you could create an infographic that looks just like this or even better with, you know, just a, a minimal amount of time. So in our next video, we'll talk about the simple tools that I use in order to put my infographic together and how you can do the same. So until we talk again, you take care, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you soon.